Thank you, Rick. What a beautiful way to start our morning. Welcome everyone in the sanctuary and everyone in the world to Valley Community Church. We're so, we've got a beautiful day to be building our spiritual strength and reminding ourselves of the teachings of Christ. Please be sure you turn off your cell phone so you don't interrupt the service. Dr. Wiggins will be giving the message, and we've got Bill Hoffman, special music, and the ever-present, thank you so much, Rick, our house musician. Welcome. Oh. <laughs> and to start our service, <laughs> let's stand and sing this morning. We've got three verses up here on the screen. for those who are looking at us on the internet. We welcome you, we thank you for being here as well. Well, <clears throat> um, since there was this quite elderly couple, both of them were in their 90s, but they decided they enjoyed each other's company and they were gonna get married. And so they chose the day and um, they spent part of the day, at least, cussing up special clothes, you know, she put on makeup and the whole thing, the whole thing. And they, they really wore themselves out getting ready for the big <laughs> day. Well, <clears throat> had somebody drive them over to, to the minister's house. And they, they, they were so tired they couldn't go in. So the minister came out and he knelt on the front seat, you know, facing the person, both sitting in the back seat. He knelt on the front seat and he did the whole service right there. And uh, he finally finished the service and, and he said, and, and now it's time to kiss the bride. And the exhausted groom said, go ahead. <laughs> 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 well, there are times in life when we get like really feel like we can't do anymore. I mean, we either it's a problem or it's an opportunity or it's just being covered over with stuff to do. Um, but Jesus said something very interesting, something that we can draw on at times like that. John fourteen ten says. 
do you not believe I am with my father and my father with me? Now, in the Lamsa translation, there is a note at the bottom of the page and it says that this is an Aramaic expression. And what it really means is, I stand for my father and my father stands for me and backs me up. He backs me up. He supports me. And it goes on. The words that I speak, I do not speak of myself, but my Father who abides with me, he does these works. God is absolutely as much with every single one of his children as he was with Jesus. God backs us up. And when we can't do it, oh, just, I'm exhausted. I've exhausted myself getting ready for this. That's when we tap an inexhaustible source of power. We remember that God is with us. We remember that we don't have to just lean on our own energies but that we can turn to the one and thank him in advance. Thank you, dear God, for your help. There isn't a time that I stand in front of you with, <clears throat> with this pulpit between us that I don't say, of myself I can do nothing. It is the Father within that doeth the works. I try to do that. I'm not advising you about something I don't do because if it comes over at all, I think it's God's, God's doing. I really believe that. So, keep it in mind this week. Think about it this week. When you've got piles of stuff to do. Or a challenge. You're not alone. The Father stands for you and he backs you up. Shall we say our statement of being? God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God and am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love. I'm going to play for us. Thank you so much. Morning. Morning. Morning, Bill. Morning, Bill. Uh, make a little change here. <laughs> we'll follow up on the doctor's message. I'm going to play to. Uh, called Someone to Watch Over Me.
time in our service when we uh, just relax, just kind of lean back. Oh, take a deep breath, close our eyes, and let it all go. Let the to-do list, oh, don't forget this, she asked me to do that. All that can be set aside for a few moments. while we turn our attention to the one omnipresent energy, universal energy, that created it all, that abides within it all, that is forever available for support. The Father backs me up. For inspiration, for energy, for insight, for love, for joy. All those things that enhance life so wonderfully. And we close our eyes and just open ourselves to that wondrous presence. And it is wondrous. It's a time of healing, an inner and outer whole making. We do ourselves a, a favor physically when we turn to that force, that omnipresent love. Physically, mentally, we relax. And we are made whole. Once again, as we return to the Father. Today we might be thinking about and concerned about friends, loved ones, things that need to be handled in the week to come. Climate change, political controversy, events taking place 
negative events taking place in foreign countries or our own country. But not right now. And hopefully not in those special moments when you go into your closet and Jesus turns it. You just relax and know his presence. Remember that much for a matter of 20 or 30 seconds. And it helps. There is a change, a positive change. You have drawn on that inexhaustible source. We do that right now, and I hope you do that at least a few times during your day for it will enhance everything about that day. Right now we're going to have 90 seconds of silence and how you spend it though, that's your choice. But perhaps just gratitude, perhaps affirming again and again that this problem is going to be taken care of and God is going to help me do it. Perhaps it's thank you for inspiring me. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. But whatever it is. Give it to God now for 90 seconds. to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you answers. I will give you strength. I will give you courage and ambition and a positive feeling of expectation of good. I will give you these things because I stand with you and behind you. I stand surrounding and filling you. I, your beloved Father, and so it is. Amen. And now shall we say the Nora translation of the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, or modern translation. Dr. Erico is an expert. 
uh, probably the best leading expert in the language of Jesus, translated exactly as Jesus spoke it from the Aramaic, and with another insight into a deeper insight into it. We're so grateful to him. So shall we share this beautiful prayer together? Our Father, who is everywhere, your name is sacred, your kingdom is come, your will is throughout the earth, even as it is throughout the universe. You give us our needful bread from day to day, and you let us not enter into materialism. You get us up. Excuse me. I'm looking at my notes in this. And you forgive us our offenses, even as we forgive our offenders. And you let us not enter into materialism, but you separate us from error, because yours are the kingdom, the power, and the song and praise from all ages, throughout all ages, sealed in faith, trust, and truth. Amen. Well, uh, this morning I'm going to be talking about, uh-oh, Christmas is a really wonderful celebration for just about everybody, and certainly it is at, at our home. The children have various schedules, as one could well imagine, and um, sometimes other family responsibilities or members that they need to contact over the holidays, but they all seem to manage to, to get to Roanoke uh, at least a few days before or during Christmas or maybe even the day after Christmas. Um, I'm not sure, though, um, from well, year to year exactly who's going to be when, where but they, they all managed to get in, and it's great. Great fun to be together. Somebody, somebody brought um, something unusual to, to Roanoke that I, I had never heard about before. Uh, the day after Christmas, um, it was discovered, and it was the makings for four or five, maybe six, Luminaries. I, I didn't know what luminaries were. I mean, you probably know. Uh, but uh, luminaries are a white paper bag, and then they have a bunch of sand at the bottom, and you put a candle down in that sand, so it's firmly held there, and you light the candles and, and put them on the sidewalk. And there they, there they are, you know, down the sidewalk, and then it's dark gets dark early and about Christmas. And they, they just glow, they're beautiful, you know. Uh, and well, anyway, my daughter Lisa found the makings for these luminaries. And she decided she was going to assemble them. Oh, it was a nice idea. And all these lovely things right down the sidewalk. And <clears throat> well, she did, and we looked out the window, and they looked so pretty. Um, we had finished dinner, and we were cleaning up when there was a knock on the door. I was thinking, who could that be? And my son-in-law, Scott, went to the door, and a strange man was there who said, did you know your lawn's on fire? <laughs> <laughs> so we pulled on our coats, we rushed outside. Lisa tried to turn on the garden hose, and it wouldn't, wouldn't move. But Lori grabbed a broom and started hitting <laughs> And Lisa and Scott were stamping them out. And fortunately, the, the, the lawn was, you know, short. And they were stamping, and and I was I was standing on the sidewalk in in a state of total shock, watching <laughs> do this. Well, fortunately, it didn't take long. It was just a few minutes before they had it all out. Everything was taken care of. Of course, the as you look at the house, the right side of the lawn 
was as black as the ace of spades. <laughs> oh, they had burned almost over to the neighbor's lawn. Almost. <laughs> Thank goodness it did not burn on their lawn. Ah, well, somebody took the lim <laughs> memories up and threw them in the garbage can. And we all went back in the house and I sat down at the table at the kitchen table and I started laughing. I couldn't stop. I just all of these the pictures of Scott and Lisa and it looked like they were dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord just <laughs> and I laughed. I couldn't stop. And and they joined me in the laughter. It was it was it was perhaps a relief from from uh, what we certainly felt was a dangerous situation. But uh, you know, when you think about it, something might then might have happened. I mean, there were dried leaves there close to the house. And, um, house is brick, but still, you know, it could have could have been very bad if that man hadn't knocked on the door. Well. Scott, of course, checked the lawn several times within the next hour or so uh, to make sure that nothing had relit, you know, and nothing had, of course. But <clears throat> in retrospect, you would have thought that four people with college degrees <laughs> would have figured out <laughs> that a lit candle <laughs> and a paper bag and 10 to 15 mile an hour wind gusts might add up to something that you wouldn't want to happen. But nobody thought of that. Nobody. nobody. There are a lot of people in our neighborhood that walk. Apparently they need to walk for exercise or they're walking with their dogs, but a lot of people actually go past that, that uh, house, my, my house, and, uh, during the, the day, during the week. And I'm sure they wondered why in the world the whole front side of the front yard was black, just burned right down. <clears throat> Fortunately, nobody knocked and asked, what happened to your lawn? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But haven't most not all of us made mistakes that were not only obvious, but maybe a little bit embarrassing. Yeah. Maybe you straightened up and hit your head, your forehead on the edge of a kitchen cabinet and got this huge shiner <clears throat> that you had to explain to everybody, you know, not, not very comfortable. Or you looked in your rear view mirror and uh, you didn't see anything behind you. And this was before uh, we had backup cameras. And uh, you backed into something, crash, and you, you creamed either your bumper or the side of the car or something like that. Or maybe, <clears throat> maybe you drank just a little more than you should have and you got into a very large argument, a loud argument, with somebody at the party and there were some important people at the party. Ouch. Mistakes. We make mistakes. And they can embarrass us. They can make us uncomfortable. They make can make us feel like everybody's looking at us, you know. We have China. Or maybe they're judging us. They hear something and, and they're, they're judging us. But that's one order of mistake. However, when the mistakes are the result of a deliberate choice at the time, like cheating on your taxes, or breaking your marriage vow, or taking money that you have access to but <coughs> is not yours, when you make wrong choices that can have life-changing consequences, and those choices have caught you in them, can't get out of them, if, or perhaps, that we become addicted, maybe to certain behaviors, like gambling, or substances, like drugs or alcohol. Oh my, 
they can cause a whole gamut of problems, negative feelings, not to mention physical illnesses, stress levels go up. The immune system simply doesn't work as well as it once did. <clears throat> and whether there are immediate negative repercussions or not, what's going on in people's head is, are they going to find out? Are they going to find out? Could it mean divorce? Could it mean humiliation? Could it mean jail time for me? Our mistakes especially the deliberate ones, vastly lower our enjoyment of life and can cause feelings of guilt and shame and sadness and anger, even anger. Shame can lead to defensive feelings like denial or avoidance or even violence. Now, <clears throat> I'm absolutely certain that I am not talking to anybody who has chosen to make severe mistakes in their life. I know that. Because they wouldn't be interested in listening to a Sunday morning service, no matter who the top speaker happened to be. It wouldn't, that wouldn't be their thing. I'm just talking about regular people like us. People who make mistakes, who aren't terribly good at figuring out possible repercussions like uh, the everyday decisions that we make. Like uh, lighting luminaries on a night that has <laughs> some high winds that come up. Is there anybody who can't look back and think, oh, I wish I had done this instead of that? We all have those. <laughs> oh, I, I wish I got my children to do this certain thing. That would have made a habit and it would have stood them in good stead the rest of their lives. I'm sorry I spoke to him so impatiently. I had a splitting headache, but I never should have said those things. I never should have. Or I should have praised her for what she did, but I just stood there and kept my mouth shut. I should have said something to encourage her. But I didn't. Things like that. Things like that. Now, I'm sure you have all sorts of uh, similar things that occasionally come to mind. Things that have happened. The words forgive and derivatives of it, like forgiven and forgiveness, appear 127 times in the Bible, Old, the Old Testament and New Testament. Jesus spoke about forgiveness a number of times. And of course, the most famous uh, quote about forgiveness came from Matthew 18, 22, when Peter asked him how many times he should forgive, quote, a bro brother who was at fault. And then he said, seven times? And uh, Peter must have thought that, Boy, he'll give me a pat on the back seven whole times. But Jesus answered this, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. In other words, we have to forgive indefinitely an unlimited number of times. Interestingly, though, Jesus never spoke about self-forgiveness. He never said anything about that. Who knows? He might have regretted later that he didn't talk about it, overlooked that. Or maybe he did talk about it, but the people around him didn't know it or didn't remember it. We don't know. But today we know for a certainty that self-forgiveness is an important part of good mental and spiritual health. Mentally and spiritually, we not only have to forgive others, we have to forgive ourselves. If Jesus 
suggested so first forcefully that we give others forgiveness, surely it's equally important to give ourselves forgiveness too. Good mental health, good spiritual health demands actually that we dredge around in our minds, that we stir up a few memories uh, and remember those moments when we didn't do unto others as we would like others to do unto us. Now, perhaps we think, well, then it's not going to be too bad to say silently to God, please forgive me for that. Depending, of course, though, on how much pain we might have caused the other person or the degree of guilt, maybe, just uncomfortable feelings concerning this thing. Depends on how we feel or think about it, but if the person is no longer with us walking the earth, then a prayerful and, and heartfelt, <coughs> forgive me, to them and to God would do. That would do. But, but, if that person still walks the earth, then we need to face our <clears throat> spiritual responsibility. And that's to own up to our mistake and apologize to them. Try to right the wrong. Try to repair the damage. Oh, that can be very hard, but incredibly freeing. Freeing. Even if they don't accept the apology, you will have done the right thing. And furthermore, you will never do that again. Boy, you've learned painfully that uh, that mistake is not something you want to touch again with a 10-foot pole. But then after that, the very next thing to do is you must forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself. You have to have empathy and compassion for that other person, whether they accept the apology or not. And you have to have empathy and compassion for yourself. Human beings make mistakes. We make mistakes. How many times have I stood right here and said, God created us to learn through our mistakes? That's what. Now, oh, there are so many reasons why we made that mistake. Maybe it was just plain ignorance. Goodness knows. We make mistakes through ignorance, through not knowing all the facts. But it can be through stress or anxiety. Maybe we had money problems and that, that's gotten us all uptight. Maybe we just feel bad physically. Maybe we're, we're worried. Or maybe we've been doing a lot of negative thinking. That's a possibility. Maybe we inherited family prejudices and we've acted on them and it hasn't worked out well. <laughs> Maybe we've listened to and followed some very bad advice and it could go on and on and on. The reason why we make mistakes. And I'm sure you could come up with a bunch of others that I would hadn't been thought of yet. Now, in a separate group, there are some people who feel such shame about things that they did that it remains a secret inside them. They never, ever shared it with anybody because they feel so bad about it. And it silently tortures them inwardly. No. For that kind of, of regret and guilt, there are special techniques to relieve that inner agony. And it certainly begins with believing that they can be forgiven. 
and there are techniques for that how to forgive yourself because we must forgive ourselves mercifully for most of us though and the way to mental and spiritual freedom uh, for self-forgiveness is a whole lot less complicated but it's something we need to do 70 times 7 take responsibility apologize try to repair the damage <clears throat> Assure yourself, boy, I'm never going to do anything like that again. Then, then, forgive yourself. That's an essential step. You forgive yourself, you release. God has never, will never, can never condemn you or judge you. God doesn't do that. God only sees the good within you. Yes, there are mistakes, but God sees perfection, the perfection that he is in you. So, neither must you condemn yourself. Instead, <clears throat> pursue it. Never give up until you have forgiven yourself and released yourself to the freedom, the inner freedom that comes with that, that you are worthy of and must enjoy. We all make uh-ohs, mistakes. We don't cause, we don't do that because we're bad people. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. We are good people. We are people who are learning. We are people who are growing, who are always becoming more and more of what we can be, which is fully God-realized citizens of the universe. We are spiritual beings <coughs> having a human experience. We are the image of an omnipresent, omniscient, all-loving God. The image. We are God's beloved child. Claim that. Claim it. Live it. Be it. Be the light. Never the mistake. Let's go with it. You stand within me, you stand behind me, you support me. In releasing, ridding myself of any feelings, memories, of uh-ohs. And I have the means of divesting them releasing them, making up, hasten my responsibility, and enjoying the freedom, the incredible inner peace that I will reap from this and from forgiving myself. Thank you, beloved father, mother, companion, friend, that this is so. Amen. Soon I'm going to do that if I can find it. I'm going to bet because uh, we're getting close to Easter. I'm not scheduled to be here Easter. So I thought I'd play this tune anyway. And uh, I'm not that familiar with it. I ran across it on YouTube. 
So if you, they say it's traditional. It's called Because He Lives. So if any of you know it, you can find the melody somewhere in here where I'm, while I'm playing. <laughs> it's just there, it's hidden in there somewhere. <clears throat> that you give to the church, to one another, and, and to yourself. Today we act, say together, Today I acknowledge God, omnipresent, as the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement, I accept God's will, which is abundance in every aspect of my life. I release all thoughts of lack and limitation, and I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to me right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning. We'll make the announcements short as possible. 
I know those are gonna be like, oh my god. We have thanks for everybody that came out to the movie night. Uh, this is the first movie night we had in a long, long time, and uh, it's a very good movie. It's Simon Birch, and some of you may have seen it, and some of us have not, but it was really good. And uh, we thank everybody for coming out. We'll be doing another one next month. Again, if you have a list of movies that you want to see, put them in a list so we can draw names out of it and decide what we want to watch on the third Friday, or fourth Friday of the month. I got all these Fridays mixed up. Uh, so we have, but we had a really good time. It was a really nice movie, and I think that uh, you will go read the, the movie in the library. If somebody wants to borrow it. Has ever heard y'all talk about it? Or I'm going to take that one home and bring another one. But, okay, so we'll have one in the library if anybody wants to take it home and watch it or whatever. So it's a very, very good movie. So uh, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, also, uh, as you know, we collect money, uh, change for the church, and we've been doing it for, I don't know, several years now, and we continue to do so. I took a 20-pound um, jug the other day, and uh, we got almost $300 worth of change uh, turned in, which almost paid for our new computer. So Yay! thank you. <laughs> change so do all you change it's hard to come by change anymore because most people don't even do cash but you know if you have to change we've got these little boxes in here so feel free to, to give that to us we greatly greatly appreciate it i know easter is coming up but we will mention that a little bit ago there's uh, be a lot of things coming up for easter uh we'll have our uh, good friday service uh and i think doug's doing that and it'll be at six o'clock that evening uh, on friday and uh, the mcc church will have their good friday at 7 15. So we need theirs back with us so they can have their service. But they will also be doing a sunrise service at 645. And on that Sunday morning, if anybody wants to attend, we'll be announcing it again next week. Um, their service will be at regular 1030, and their uh, regular service will be at 1. So um, that is all I know for Easter service right now, I think. So uh, anyhow, um, and I wanted to um, thank Ann for the flowers today as she sponsored them. And, she said they were for me, so thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> thank you so much. So, Maria, do you have anything? Uh, you still in the reading class at 5 o'clock on yes. Wednesdays, and our coffee is at 6 30. So, feel free to come out to any of those things that you want to come out to. Thanks. Yes, indeed. Well, we say a prayer of protection at this time, but First, let us pray for all the people who are represented by the initials in this little box, this little basket, I should say. For we know that uh, so many of them are experiencing health challenges, perhaps financial challenges, interpersonal challenges we can't imagine. Shall we have just a moment of silent prayer for them? God knows them, every one. He knows whose names are in this basket. And he is lovingly with each and all. And we give him thanks. Oh, thank you. For his incomparable presence. With them. And now, not just the, uh, the names in the basket that we honor tonight, today, but all the people who are in areas of the world where there is war, there is controversy, there is totalitarian governments, and we have just a few of them listed here. There are many others. And can we also hold in our prayer all those people who are hungry today, or thirsty, <clears throat> or in pain, or hopeless? Shall we go within for 90 seconds, and each in their own way, bless and hold these individuals in mind, knowing that God is right there. 
available. give thanks knowing that these prayers today have subtly affected countless individuals in countless places in the most subtle and yet spiritual way. We thank you, dear God, that it is so. 